Hey, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to tether your camera to your computer. And we're gonna do this in a few ways. First of all, I'm gonna give you the really quick skinny on it. And all you need is one of these. This is a USB cable. Now each camera needs a different USB cable, but if you go to the Tether Tools website, they have a thing which tells you which camera needs which cable. Um, despite this looking like a Tether Tools cable, it's not. This is actually a very premium high-end cable. Um, you can power it, it's long, it's USB-C. Um, it's very fast and it never drops out. If you're having problems with tethering, chances are it's your cable. So what you need to do is plug your cable into your computer. You open up Capture One, which is the best tether software. Lightroom can do it. All you have to do is go to File, Tether, Tether, Capture. It's the same thing, but it's really inconsistent and there's a reason why pros use Capture One. And then it literally brings everything up. Now mine says F-Stop Auto because I'm using a manual lens. But here we've got 25th of a second, ISO 800, and you can adjust all of this. And you just hit click, and there's your picture. It records it straight to your hard drive. And I have a bit of software called Chronosync that the second that image goes in, it duplicates it to this drive here, which is called Tether Drive, which is just like a, an ongoing backup of the shoot. This obviously then all goes into my office, which is where we do the big system backup, and then we do an offsite backup too, of course, but this is the main bit of it. This also have live view capabilities. So here we've got live view. Um, we can just go in here and just flip that so it's the right way around for the shot. And that means we can then focus the camera in live view, which is quite useful sometimes, especially for an old manual camera like this one. But it also means that if you're using an autofocus lens, you can focus the camera here. So you can do very precise focus stacking. If your camera's out of reach, it's in a big like, sometimes this guy here is like gone. And I can't focus it. If I had an autofocus lens on, for example, I could focus it from here. And then all we do is close this down and take the shot. And it allows us to get shots which we wouldn't necessarily be able to get without a, a dangerous ladder. Let's bring this back down before I have an incident. There we go. Now, one of the great things about Capture One is this extra bit of software called Capture Pilot. Now, I think you have to buy the app. It's like nine or 14 pounds or something random like that. But it lets you use it on an iPad or, if I had it with me, an iPhone. And what we do is we start a server. So you come into the camera bit and just down here, it says capture pilot. Just click start server, go to your app, click on the server within the app. It's very easy to do. And you can shoot, you can view, you can raid, you can do everything that you might need to from an iPad or a phone. And you have as many people on it as you want. You can give different people different permissions. So I'll often be sat here on my iPad checking the images whilst the Digitech is sat over there. And the Digitech's the person who manages this cart of joy here. So uh, that is a very useful little tool. They also now have this live offsite one, which is great. Could have done without at the start of COVID, but there we go. Um, but there we go, very simple workflow. It's not difficult, it is daunting, but all you need is a USB cable. Now the big misconception is often that it's the same as, we see with this camera we're looking at here, it has this little screen, which is an HDMI output going into it. That is showing you what the sensor sees, and that is different to tethering. Tethering is capturing the image and pulling the data across to a different source. That is tethering, and it is so useful and so important. Normally when we're shooting, we have this screen here mirroring the image. We might actually face this to the clients over there or to the food stylist, whoever it may be. The Digitech will sit here and do the firing of it. I'll have my little setup over here, and everyone can sort of keep out of each other's hair, and it's not some horrifically stressful ordeal. Now, if you're using Lightroom, that's fine. It does work. It now has live view for certain camera brands as well. Lightroom just isn't as good a tool as Capture One. If you can afford to buy Capture One as well, go for it. it you, it's so good. The color grading's better. The way it reads a raw file is better. And the way it tethers is perfect. Um, whereas Lightroom is a much better cataloging tool, but in terms of color grading, tethering, not that great. The downside is you still need Photoshop. And with the, the way the bundles are set up, you get Lightroom with Photoshop, and then you have to pay an extra like 20 pounds a month for Capture One. So it's like doubling the fee because one part of the Adobe software is rubbish. So it's a bit annoying, but <laughs> we're all trying to get away from Adobe, let's be honest. I, I pay 50 pounds a month or something ludicrous like that, and it all crashes. It all, the Photoshop's great, InDesign's great, that's it. I've moved all my video editing over to DaVinci, the pro version of that, rather than Premiere, because Premiere used to crash so often you'd end up with like, this video title, copy, 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 because that's all the, the saves and like times it's bought it back from the brink after it crashes, but Lightroom's very similar. 
when we used to use Lightroom, when I started out, we'd constantly have dropout, we'd constantly have problems with files transferring across. But Capture One is just, you plug it in, you press the button. You don't even need to activate tethering. In Lightroom, you have to go through the menu system to do it. Not so here. Likewise, if you want to start color grading, you can start just pulling in these like, um, I've already started, haven't I? There we go, banging in some color grades. And then when you take the next shot, it'll just apply it to it. Whereas in, capture, in Lightroom, you have to create a preset, apply the preset, and then it applies the preset, but any small adjustments don't count. It's, there's a whole load of stuff, but this is why pros use Capture One. You don't have to use it. There's no like, oh, you must use Capture One. You can still use Lightroom if you want to. There are still pros out there who use it. Often what you're more familiar with is better, but if you have the time and the patience, familiarize yourself with Capture One. Now we've got here a 4K BenQ monitor. Um, it says, do not touch. It's printed on the bottom. That's because clients come in, they go this bit and put their grubby fingerprints on it. Now, none of this is calibrated. We don't calibrate any of this tether station. It's like close enough, but we've got windows here. We've got LED lights and we've got modeling lamps on. There's no point in calibrating here, but when we get into the office for the actual edit, everything there is calibrated within an inch of its life and it is all just so and exactly as it needs to be in order to create the work. Anyway, I hope this has been of use to you. If you have any questions on tethering, let me know below and I'll try and get another video out soon. Speak to you soon. Bye-bye. Okay, so file, tether capture, start tether capture, we give it a name. This will now be what is down here on the side bit. So we'll just call it Studio Session. That's fine. Um, don't tend to do anything else. Press OK. And here is our thing. So 5DSR, there it is. We've got Live View. And again, we can like flip this round. And I'll, I'll be honest, this is better than I remember it being. It used to like never work. And then we'll take a shot. OK, there we go. That's not doing anything. If I fire the camera, and here's a prime example of why I no longer use Lightroom. But this is how it works. This is how it should work. Um, and this is why I use Capture One. There we go. Good times, Adobe. Good times.